Hamilton Courthouse. Who are you? Jen. Not in Hulk form. Just Jen. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's cool. Unexpected. I made breakfast. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Doctor's a cliche anyway. Stop it. Get some help. She Hulk, episode four. Is this not real magic? Let me answer that question. No. The magic is in how did the writers keep these jobs? How are they so inept, so terrible at what they do that they fail at every level? Let's get into this episode. I don't want to waste your time because I wasted time watching the show, but I'm suffering and I want to share it with you guys. That is a cunt move. We start out with some magic and this guy who ends up being Donnie Blaze, which I don't know if that was supposed to be a play on Ghost Rider, sends a dumb prostitute to another dimension. We learn her name's Madison. And long story short, she ends up at Wong place why don't you go back to your home on whore island spoils the episode of the sopranos he was watching and then we have the intro sequence yes that is the lead into this show my lead into this video was far more entertaining than that if i do say so myself yep i couldn't really pay attention to the dialogue because it was so stupid and i just wanted to tell the writers it just quit being a cunt cut to jen of course breaking the fourth wall talking to the audience she says wong's back Everybody's loves Wongsies. It's like Twitter armor for the week for the show. Oh, God. All sorts of things have gone wrong. Jen's dad shows up, you know, Larry from Perfect Strangers, and she basically tells him she doesn't need him because a Hulk, she's a Hulk, and he's just a white man, and she doesn't need extra locks and security systems. But she says the shovel he brought, you know, he can use that to bury the bodies after she's done, basically is what she alludes to. Uh, back at Jen's office, she finishes her dating profile. It's complete with pronouns, of course. And then Wong shows up and goes off about this magician, Donnie Blaze, using magic that is not, you know, he's not supposed to be using because he dropped out of Kamataj or Taj Mahal or Taj Mahal or Trump Towers or wherever he dropped out of. Liar! He can't practice this magic. It's violating the space-time continuum transfunction. Or wait, that was another movie. Are you fucking high? Even though Benedict Wong is completely great in this role, uh, the character is largely and grossly misused here. And I say misused because it's just stupid contrived writing by a bunch of cat moms. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Two single, 30-plus career-minded women walk into a bar and get approached by a toxic white male. Have you heard that one before? Probably if you've ever listened to an intersectional feminist talk, but that happens to Jen and Nikki and they're approached by, like I said, a toxic middle-aged white male who's clearly punching upwards, you know, trying to flirt with these two, but whose dialogue is clearly written and is in this man by someone who is either mentally... He was a retard. Or a feminist, but that's kind of the same thing. I'm not making excuses for guys like that because there's some that do exist and they are douchebags out there. What are you, gay? But Nikki makes fun of Jen's dating profile because she used her corporate headshot for her profile picture and God knows that's a dating website faux pas. What a stupid son of a bitch. So they try to have a sit down with Donnie Blaze, Wong and Jen and whoever this other guy is, is with Donnie Blaze. But it's a joke. Uh, Donnie Blaze hits on Jen. The scene's complete garbage. And I didn't really pay attention to the dialogue because it was so mind-numbing. So then we go to Jen, who's on a date with a loser. It's clearly not a match. The guy's on the phone while she's sitting there talking to him. And then she just starts testing him to see if he's listening. Tells him she's She-Hulk. She can lift a car up over his head. Yada, yada, yada. Nobody cares. You know, he stiffs her for the bill for the drinks. And then, of course, the toxic white male leaves. In court, Wong makes Madison, you know, spelled with a Y, and then, but you don't know where the Y is. Uh, he makes her appear, and of course, it's the middle of the day, and she's drunk. And the defense lawyer for Donnie Blaze and the whole is a magician, and the whole thing just devolves into madness until Wong monologues 
the judge grants Blaze the ability to continue practicing magic because of a bunny trick, which wasn't even a trick because his fat lawyer pulled it out from behind her. Uh, never mind, it doesn't matter. There ain't no fluff here. Then Wong and Madison leave to get Froyo and watch The Sopranos, which she, of course, spoils for him again. Shut up, bitch! And at this point, are you guys keeping score that this episode is really written by... I, I believe, Honestly, I think it was Helen Keller that wrote this. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> at her apartment, Jen makes a She-Hulk dating profile, has a ton of matches, her first date's with a meathead, uh, then we get a soy boy, then a dopey guy who asks her a bunch of weird questions and calls her a specimen. Then she meets our pediatric oncologist we saw in the original trailer, you know, who she picks up and carries to the bedroom. We'll get to that. Who He wants to hear about her. And, you know, like I said, it's the guy from the commercial. So meanwhile, Donnie Blaze is trying to get another woman to enter a portal, and she makes fun of him and refuses. So he makes a dove appear, which lays an egg on her hand, which hatches into a troll, and the troll starts to wreak havoc because he opens a portal to get rid of this troll and then a bunch more trolls appear and then blaze opens another ring to get wong to help him which he does begrudgingly and jen's back at her apartment with the oncologist and wong told blaze to call her while he cleans up the mess that donnie made so jen's phone keeps buzzing and interrupting her and mr oncologist who says he hates swipe dating because it's so dehumanizing clearly female written dialogue because no man outside of a male feminist cup who's trying to score says some stupid shit like that so wong opens a portal into jen's apartment and she kind of helps him and she monologues about fighting demons while she's fighting demons which is weird because she just has i don't know it doesn't it doesn't make any sense don't think about it don't ask questions just consume product and then get excited for next product She's mad she's fighting demons when there's a hot guy at her apartment, and she gets Blaze to agree to the cease and desist, you know, after threatening him with one of the last remaining trolls. So, meanwhile, back at the apartment, uh, you know, Mr. Nice Guy is laying on the couch reading a book, and want to know what it's called? It's called Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gay, because that's something a man who isn't a beta male would do. The entire dating sequence is a writer's self-insert. The actor playing Jen's date is kind of a good-looking guy, well-built, successful oncologist, who's obviously, by the writers, you know, by their input, a male feminist. Ha! <laughs> Gay! In the morning, Nikki texts Jen and says she wants my details. <laughs> but tells her that Titania is in the news again and apparently a, her anus is torn and healed from that shitty wire work a couple weeks ago. Titania was cleared of all charges. There's a hashtag free Titania movement because of course there is. Then Guy wakes up, blows her off because she's a normal form, Jen. And he's like, Jesus Christ, this isn't what I signed on for. She catfished me, but at least I got laid by a giant green chick who can bench press me. And then she gets served papers on behalf of Titania, who's suing Jen for use of the name She-Hulk because Titania Worldwide LLC or whatever the stupid shit is called, trademarked it first. And that's the end of our episode right there. Oh my God! I'm dead! I'm dead! That's, that's it. That's all the action. I use air quotes on action because the demon fighting scene was absolutely stupid. And it was a waste of time and made no sense. Uh, they don't have any villains on this show. They really don't. They don't have any fucking villains. You had the Wrecking Crew you destroyed in like nine seconds. You had some stupid troll demons that were done in, what, less than a minute scene. That's, that's it. That's literally it. I think I can sum up the show for you with one word. Nothing. That's it. I mean, other than the patriarchy, what are you bitches fighting against? Boo this man! No! Oh yeah! There's an exciting post credit scene where Madison and Wong are talking about different liquors and drinks and she finds out Wong likes gin and tonic and they're, you know, sitting there watching a movie eating popcorn and that's your post credit scene. I fucking swear it is. I can't make this shit up. That's it. That's episode four of She-Hulk. So at this point, I'm not going to ask you if you're watching the show. I'm going to ask you how bad do you think it's going to get? Do you think how much more mental damage do you think I'm going to sustain? Is it going to be like Batwoman? Let me know in the comments below. If today's the day I've earned it, hit the subscribe button, ding the bell for notifications. Share the video, not just for me, for your other favorite YouTubers. 
you can join the channel. Memberships are available if you like, if you so wish. Become a Kazooian, a Harvey Wakuian producer. That's available $2.99, $4.99 a month right there, folks. That's it. I'm done. I'm Etep Wakuian from The Place to Be Reviews. I've been here with all these. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow, and I'll catch you on the next one. The age of men is over. It's better to burn out than to fade away. I could do this all. Fade